what's going on my youtube friends my patreon friends my australian friends my kiwi friends how we all doing this is really cool man this has been a lot of fun over the last little while but listen i'm gonna take this whole entire intro just to talk to my friend rob here and my friend you gotta join me on patreon i will send you i will send you all your paypal money back if you want you just gotta come join me on patreon bro you've already paid for a year <laughs> you paid for the whole year already like <laughs> And I appreciate it, man. I love it. These artists have been so much fun. I've been introduced to some great, great people, some great, great artists because of this. And I appreciate this, man. So I'm not even going to chat too much. I'm not even going to chat too much, man. Voodoo Child, Hendrix cover, Lachi Doli, La La Lachi Doli Live Studios 301 Sessions. Man, this looks great. There's SM7s everywhere. There's like these self-monitoring systems everywhere. He's playing a ho like Horner. I, I didn't even remember that they made keyboards. They make a lot of... um. Uh, harmonicas i didn't I, actually i don't even know if they, i knew they made keyboards so <laughs> okay let me pull this up let me pull this up my friends uh and let's watch this let's watch this i got headphones today my fiance's still sleeping so is it like a wah or is it like a theremin because like on a theremin, you don't actually touch it, right? It's like electromagnetic something. And then like the closer you get to it, the higher the frequencies freak out and everything. But this is almost like a wah. Interesting, man. I got If there's a video, if there's a video on what's going on here, someone please tag me in it. Please, God, tag me in it. My God, that's nasty! Oh my God, I gotta not yell. Oh. Chills, bro. Oh. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> it's in my legs. <laughs> oh, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting this, my friends. I'm not about to stand up, but like, I, if I had a raising desk, I would be standing right now. My legs are like tingling. This, it's like, whoo. <sighs> okay. So, oh my god, that's so hard how he can do like it sounds like it's like pinch squeals and like these big like um uh like the the dime squawks I think they were called. Dime Big Daryl did them, right? You, like so you do you do a pinch harmonic and you pull the the uh the trend bar way up and he's like doing that but like with the pitch because he can get up the octave high enough, right? God, this is wild. This is nuts. <laughs> my god, like oh man. His voice is wild too. I wish we had a little bit more of it. But like I under I understand that like right now this like guitar thing is kind of like the show, but like dude's got a voice too, man. Wow. Holy. I I can't express to you how uncomfortable I am right now. <laughs> I'm like gonna start fidgeting. <laughs> Here we go. Come on.
So, like, I almost wonder if that thing is doing, like, the wah, but it almost feels like it has, like, a bit of, like, a, um, like, a trem to it. Ah, man, this, I would love to see what's going on in that keyboard, man. While we're on top of this drum kit, like, the only mic I know on here is, like, this is a, this is a Neumann, I'm pretty sure. It looks like a 421 of the kick drum and on the toms. This is wild, my friends. This is a SM57 on the auxiliary snare. This drummer, like, I don't know how he's keeping a straight face doing all this, man. Dude's killing this and, like, laying into it. But, like, I don't even, like, know what to say, man. I don't even, like, know how to feel right now. <laughs> they got an XY pattern over the Congos here as well as close mics. That's cool. That's, like, something I would do. A little bit of overkill. This is just, like, sound baffling to separate the two so you get better recordings, right? God, man. Oh, play this thing. Oh, okay, so it is a trem, and then his hand is like the theremin, and it, it does the wall part, right? So it's like, whoa, and then it's like, wah, wah, right? Is that kind of the vibe that's going on here? I didn't mean to take up all your sweet time. I'll give it right back to you one of these days. I didn't mean to take up all your sweet time. Back to you, one of these. See, I didn't mean to take up all your sweets. I'll give it right back to you, one of these. Alright. And if I meet you no more. That rasp there, man. That's got to be like I think that's a uh, that's false chord. So it's a, a th I'm all over myself now. It's either above or below the vocal cord. I think it's above the vocal cord, but it's not actually the vocal cord that like does the the squall part. It's right above that, and then it's almost like a I think the the mechanical process is like a pinch harmonic in a guitar where like it you you the note happens, but it just kind of like is still. So like you still have you still have vibration and resonance, but like the chords themselves are still. So you get that like in a guitar, you get that like. Bah! like really noisy kind of stuff but um in when you're screaming it's like a quieter way of still getting a scream out right and i think that's what he was doing here because it didn't sound like he was like yelling when it came to dynamics but like it was a great scream nonetheless man this guy's got a voice Come on, drums. Oh man, that's so hard. Found it. Oh my god. 
what the hell was that? Like, I, I, I prefer this to any guitar cover, any guitar cover I've seen. Hands down, man. Hands down. Um, SM7Bs are like one of my favorite mics. I almost wish he wasn't singing into it, though. I wish he was singing into something a little bit more brilliant because, like, I wish we got more of his voice. I just, I don't know. Maybe it was a mix thing. Maybe it was my headphone thing. I don't know. Fantastic microphones. It would give a lot of the, like, nuances. Like, a lot of that scream would develop really well in this microphone. Um, but I just wish it was something a little hotter. So we just got a little more of it, man, because this dude was nuts. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> I want to watch this. What the heck is that keyboard? Yeah. It's my whammy clav. Let's take a look, shall we? A fully stringed keyboard from the 60s. Much like a mini piano, but way funky. Oh. Think of Stevie Wonder's Superstition. <laughs> but mine has one big difference. That's right. The whammy, the whammy bar. bar. Nuts. Unlike most whammy bars that actually lower the pitch. On the clap. It raises the pitch. So over here we've got the preamp section, volume knob, this is obviously the keyboard. Normally there's a mute here which dampens all the strings, but that's not here at the moment. Alright, let's open this sucker up. So basically like today, like when you have a keyboard, this just sends electronic information to like a MIDI pack or whatever you have triggering the keyboard sounds. And then like back in the day or like in acoustic pianos, you have hammers that hit strings, right? And so like this is like at a time where they were trying to bridge those two so they could make the strings smaller but still get the different tones and sounds you wanted out of it. You didn't need three, four, five feet and two, three, four strings or however many strings, two or three strings per hammer to make noise, right? Like, like this is when they just started transferring into this stuff. So cool that he did that. That's probably why it sounded so like authentically similar to like a guitar because it's strings. Like, he's bending strings, right? Let's see what we got. This area here is the harp section so this obviously has all the strings which go down to the Look machine heads here and these strings come in four different gauge sizes just like a guitar you've got two single coil pickups here this one i call them so those are just uh, the magnet strips that uh, when like they're lined up per string and then when the string vibrates the magnet picks up the tone of it right and you get two so like in a, an electric guitar you have two positions like on a telecaster two single coils um the bridge one the back one this one here um will be sorry this one here will be brighter like more like for like your lead tones you're like chugging and stuff um or your brighter tones i guess and then like your neck one's like darker bluesier so like some people use that for um solos and all that kind of thing um not so much for like chugging and like riffing because it gets muddy but like anything that's like really really bright and high it's just like it adds more like oomph to it so it carries a little better bridge pickup is right near the bridge and this one I call the body pickup because it's more in the meat of the harp itself. Now, if you want to hear both pickups played together, set it to D. Alternatively, C for individual pickups. B is the bridge pickup. A is the body pickup. Whack the D, and then you can switch them in and out of phase. Now, if we follow interesting, because that was an old thing too. Like, um, I don't, I don't really know how to describe. So basically, like what phase happens is like if if I have one micro or set it's if I have two microphone sources. And if I blend them at the same time, but if my vo if the sound waves in my voice are catching picking up in the microphones at different times, you can have phasing issues where they'll like cancel each other out. So although the timing is correct, like like the words would sound the same, the frequencies aren't aligned the way that they're supposed to, and they'll start cutting each other out. But you start getting some really nasty like blues things and cool, almost like problems that you can't really recreate, and it gives you like interesting sonic things when you're kind of in control of it from time to time and so like what he's saying is he can have it set up where you can hear both pickups or you can have it where the two pickups kind of fight with each other and it just gives you a sound that you can't really create it's a sonic like it's i hope i hope that kind of gets the point across strings up the board you will find the whammy system yeah oh it rolls so it the whole trim attaching the strings to the teeth on the bar here just like a floyd the original clavinet teeth here yeah now, as you push down on the whammy bar, the cylinder Tightens rolls it. over, stretching the strings, and that causes the pitch to be raised. So, so on a typical whammy bar, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, move the scene, move the scene. Okay, so on a typical whammy bar, this is Dave's purple guitar. Um, you play the string, and it's uh, it's harnessed right here like so there's a lock this thing is holding the string instead of it being harnessed to the body or like a, a fixed part of the bridge right it's also locked at the top so when you play the note 
it should, this is like in C or something, but like I said, it's E. And then you can dump this and drop the tension to like next to nothing. There's no noise happening. Listen to this. And, it, and then in theory, it should come right back to tune if it's a decent guitar, right? So his goes the other way where it bends up. So like you can still do that. I can do this. But it's just like you don't get as much freedom as like what he would on that thing because that was a big arm, right? Um, hold on. All right, show and tell day. How much does the pitch actually change? Well, similar to a guitar, it's different all across the board. On average, it's about five tone. semitones. I personally like to set my high C here to be an exact tone. Therefore, I can slam it down and be confident that it's going to hit a nice D really solidly. Love that. So when you flip it over, you can see these funky little black rubbers. That's what actually strikes the strings on the anvil here. Uh, so instead of ha um, hammers and a piano, he's got those. Beautiful okay. tone. So it doesn't actually theremin. It's just that's just him just getting into it. If you like it, okay. this video, or like my music, please hit the subscribe button. Oh, bro, what you got me. You got me, man. I'm on board. I'm in. Full fledged, full send. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm supposed to rack to you for the rest of the day, man. So thanks, thanks for setting my day up like this. <laughs> All right, but uh, my friends, see everyone again soon.